Welcome guys. In this video, we're going to make this cute little pot holder that has the two side flaps so that you can put your hand in there and grab your hot pan or the handle of your hot frying pan without burning your hand while looking adorable at the same time and also using up some of that fabric stuff that we all have. I'm Mary Beth Temple. Let's get going. <laughs> So let's talk about materials for a minute. I used pieces from fat quarters because like many of us, I stash fat quarters like crazy. So two things that coordinate, that works fine. Uh, but any other kind of scrap you have from your quilting projects will work just fine. The first thing you're going to need is some sort of batting. Now this is Thermoflex and it has a heat resistant silver side and then a thick cotton batting on the other side and it is pre-quilting. I love this stuff for pot holders and oven mitts because it doesn't shift when I'm sewing and it's easy to work with. Now, if you don't have this fabric or it's not available to you, you can use a regular cotton batting, a nice thick one because you want to protect your hands from the hotness of the potter pan. Or you can also sometimes find this silver fabric just as a separate item. So you can use whatever batting you have laying around and then get the plain silver heat reflective and use that. But if you can find the Thermoflex, that's the easiest thing to use. So we need an eight inch square of the Thermoflex. Then you need two nine inch square pieces of your regular fabric. Now, a lot of quilting cottons are kind of sheer. You can see right through this. And because the one side of the Thermoflex is silver, it makes the fabric look a little dull. So you don't have to do this, but what I did is I cut just a square of white that I'm going to put under. It just brightens up the fabric on that side. If your fabric is not sheer or you don't feel bothered by seeing the silver through, then you don't have to do that step. But if you're going to do that step, then a nine inch square of that too. And then I cut two pieces for the little side decorations. Each of these are three inches by nine inches and then some bias tape. I just used regular uh, extra wide double fold prepackaged bias tape. I didn't make anything fancy. A five inch piece for the hanger loop and then two nine inch pieces for the decorations. The first thing we're going to do is very quick and dirty. I'm going to take this five inch piece of bias binding that I cut and I'm just going to run a line of top stitching down the folded side because I'm going to use this later on for the hanging loop. Now, if you don't want a hanging loop on your pot holder, you don't have to have one. But if you do, that's all I need to do for that. I'm not worried about lock stitching at the beginning and end. It's going to have its raw edges encased in the pot holder, so I'm not worried. So let's talk about these little side pieces. Now, some of you may know this and some of you may not, but most commercial bias tape, when you buy it one side, is a teensy tiny bit more narrow than the other side. And that's to make sure that when you're top stitching, you know that you are catching the one below. So you want the right side of the fabric facing you. You want the slightly more narrow side of the bias tape on the top. And I'm going to top stitch down the edge of the bias tape. And once again, I'm not worried about lock stitching because it's going to, the raw edge is going to be encased. And then I'm going to do that one more time for the other side. And as a reminder, because these guys sort of face each other, when you're looking at the two pieces, you're going towards the inside. So one is on the left-hand side of the fabric and one is on the right-hand side of the fabric. All right, let's get this all laid out so that we can assemble it. The first thing I need, and remember this is optional. If you're not using it, that's fine. But the first thing I'm going to use is my white barrier fabric, right side up. Then a piece, uh, one of the nine inch squares of the potholder base fabric, right side up. Then I'm going to use the two side pieces, right side up, and line those up the way I want them. Then my little hanging guy right here, I'm going to just put a little finger press in that, and that's going to go in the top right corner or the top left corner, or again, you don't need to have it if you don't want it. And then finally, my last piece of the potholder fabric right side down. So I have pinned this all out on all four sides and I made sure to put a straight pin in the hanger, in the hanging loop, because I do not want that to wobble around while I'm sewing. 
So I'm going to begin on either of the sides, either of the sides that are the side of the piece, not the top or the bottom that have different fabrics on. I'm going to start on the side. So I'm going to sew on four sides, but I'm going to leave an opening on this one side so I can turn the whole ball game inside out when I'm done. So I'm going to start maybe two inches up from the bottom. Uh, I have left a half inch seam allowance when I gave you the measurements. I do prefer to lock stitch at the beginning and the end of that opening because there's a little bit of pressure on it when you're turning it inside out. Now uh, again when I'm sewing along here I want to make sure that my uh, bias bound pieces are laying perfectly flat. Here's my third side. I'm going to go all the way across and when I get to the hanging loop, I'm going to take that pin out to make sure I don't uh, break anything. So my hanging loop's right in here. I'm going to make sure I don't turn the corner until after I've passed it. There we go. That's better. Now, this is the side I began on, so I'm not going all the way down. I'm going about two inches in, and then I'm going to lock stitch. All right. The next thing that has to happen, I'm going to trim the seam allowance all the way around, except in the opening. I want to leave that a little bit longer so I can see how to fold it in. And then on each corner, I'm going to clip diagonally across the corner so that there is not a lot of seam allowance to uh, squish in there. Now, a trick I learned a long, long time ago in a galaxy far away when I was working on Broadway is when you're going to turn a corner, the easiest way to get it to go neatly is to turn one side towards the back and one side towards the front when you are turning it inside out. So I'm going to clip all these seams I'm going to very carefully turn all these corners and I'm going to turn the whole thing inside out so the backing fabric is on one side and all of the other fabrics are on the other. So I have the backing fabric on one side and everything else is on the other side. I'm going to turn the whole thing inside out. All right, so I clipped my seams, I clipped my corners, I turned everything inside out and I gave it a quick press and I also pressed in that seam allowance in the opening. So let's talk once again about our Thermoflex. Now I said at the beginning that I had that white barrier fabric to make sure the silver didn't show through, but the more I think about it, what I want to do is put the silver away from me. I want the silver fabric to be towards the hot pan, not towards my hand. So I still have that barrier fabric so that the beige doesn't show through, but uh, once again the barrier fabric is optional. So here is my opening, and when I use the pot holder, my hands are going to be in here, so I want the silver towards this side. So I want to reach in so I just have the backing fabric on this one side and everything else on the other side. And I'm going to just fold this a little bit and stick it in the hole. So it will take me a little while. This is something you really want to take the time to make sure that it lays nice. There it goes. So the first thing that I would do is I would hand stitch this clothes with an invisible stitch. And the reason I want to hand stitch it closed, I'm going to top stitch later, but I don't want the, uh, the lips of the opening to kind of flop around. It doesn't look attractive. So the first thing I would do is just hand stitch this closed with an invisible seam. The next thing that I would do, let me show you on the one that's finished. Top stitch all four sides, trying to catch the thermoflex underneath because you don't want it to bunch when you throw it in the wash. Um, about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch in from each edge, so top stitch all the way around. And then once again, to make sure that the Thermoflex doesn't bunch when you throw this in the washing machine, the last thing that I did is I pushed the opening back and just top stitch through all layers for about four or five inches, one under this side and one under that side. And again, that's just for a durability issue. It's not, you can't see it from this side and it's not really important on that side, but 
one of the things about pot holders, of course, they get dirty. You want to throw them in the wash. So that's a durability thing. So there we have it. We have our little hanging loop. We have our pot holder. And when you want to use it, you stick your hands in the opening and grab your hot dish. Thanks so much for joining us on this video. We had a lot of fun using up our stash. These also make terrific gifts if you're doing a, a housewarming gift or a, a wedding shower or something like that. But let's be honest, the most important part is that we're using up some of that stash fabric that is piling up in our homes. I'm Mary Beth Temple. Thank you so much for joining us.